Grok 2.0 just released and it allows you to generate images of anybody doing anything that is not involving nudity or gore or anything like that. But you can draw images of anybody doing anything. And this functionality is not going to last for much longer. When Grok 1.0 released, it allowed you to give prompts of anybody doing anything. And those stories were raunchy. You could have sexual stories of the most famous people in the world doing things together. And that functionality lasted for about a week. And then I wouldn't even call it patched. They probably could have restricted it from the beginning, but they left it in because that got a lot of publicity and press. And it's the same thing with Grok 2.0. You can generate images with Grok 2.0 of anybody doing these things, non-sexual, of course, Nothing too violent, but still like anybody doing anything. And I won't be surprised, it's getting tons of press right now, going super viral. And I won't be surprised if this is patched in a few days because I saw it from the first Grok where I would have stories of anybody doing the craziest things, anybody. And then I think like a week later, that was patched. But it's very smart. It's a smart marketing tactic because it's going so viral and everyone wants to use it. But I want to share what I'm actually doing with this right now while the functionality still exists because it's $8. It's easy to use. Literally, if you pay for premium on the web app, it is $8. So take your niche and then take the most famous people in the world, either doing your niche or using a product in your niche. So for example, my niche, search engine optimization and digital marketing. And I am making images of the most famous characters and icons doing search engine optimization and digital marketing. I just created an image of Iron Man in Iron Man's lab doing search engine optimization. And it looks crazy. And I'm so hyped about this because First of all, what you could do is you could do a carousel post on Instagram of your characters, or it could be a image post on TikTok where you have multiple images and music on it or a carousel post on Instagram. And you have these characters doing your niche or using products in your niche and they're recognizable. And then at the end of the carousel, you say what your product is and you're not having them use your product, but it's in your niche. And it gets engagement because these are recognizable characters and you don't have to say that you made the images. And then at the end of the carousel is some information about your product and people already are being primed to think about this niche and this product. So search engine optimization, for example, like I'll just have all these images of famous icons, famous characters doing SEO and they're not doing SEO with my product. They're just doing SEO. And then at the end, at the end of these images, I show some information about my product. I can also use it in videos. In fact, I will use it in videos. Oh gosh, it's crazy. It is crazy the things that I have been drawing or the things that Grok 2.0 has been drawing and the things that I have been prompting. I just made Thor doing search engine optimization. What I am doing, I want to share what I'm doing. I am using chat GPT to generate the prompts, super detailed prompts that I will then put into Grok 2.0. So for example, I will tell ChatGPT, write a mid-journey prompt for draw Thor doing search engine optimization. He is sitting behind a computer looking at the Google interface. The scene is set in Asgard. And then I will say, make sure to specify that the Thor is played by Chris Hemsworth and make it from the side so that you can see his face. And I got a crazy prompt. I take that prompt, I paste that prompt into Grok 2.0 and it gives me exactly the image that I want. It's so crazy and here it is. This is Thor doing search engine optimization and I'm looking at it right now. This is so insane. And I know that this functionality is not going to last and I think it is a tremendous marketing opportunity. You can also take these images and then put them into a tool like Luma.ai. Luma.ai will use keyframes and it can have one image turn into another image. You can have an image turn into your product. You can make two images of Iron Man doing search engine optimization and then have them turn into each other and then make it look kind of actually like he's sitting behind a computer doing search engine optimization or just normal animation. I think Kling AI will also animate images. I should actually try putting some of these images in the Kling AI 
last time I tried Kling AI, it was notoriously bad. And I made a viral video about how bad it was. But these things are always getting better. The thing is, because I really believe that this functionality will not be around for a lot longer, I will not be surprised at all if this is fixed in the next week or something. They could, they could have launched it with this being patched. They could have launched it with this functionality not, not existing. It could have launched with this functionality not existing easily. And it was intentional because it gets people talking, gets people using it, and it is really wild. I mean, listen to how excited I am by this. But so here's what I'm doing. First of all, I wouldn't be surprised if all saved images on Grok are wiped. I could see that happening. If the Grok database just was wiped for any history that contained an image. So any image that I like, I am saving that image. I am saving that. I have a folder of famous people doing search engine optimization, and I am saving all of those images because I really would not be surprised if not only is this functionality not around in a week from now, but all the images that you made, they're wiped too. I just could totally see that happening. So I would not count on your history for image creations being retained. I am saving all of these images in a folder on my laptop. That's one. Number two, like I said, I am using this while it lasts. I am so excited. You can make such crazy thumbnails for YouTube as well. The thumbnail for this video is going to be Iron Man doing search engine optimization. You can make such crazy thumbnails, such insane images for YouTube videos. Like I said, TikToks, Instagram reels. Oh my gosh, headings for articles and newsletters. And I want to say I tried these same prompts in ChatGPT. I didn't try them in Midjourney, but Midjourney has been just as restrictive as ChatGPT. But I did try them in ChatGPT. ChatGPT wouldn't make Beyonce doing search engine optimization. You know what would? Grok 2.0. So maybe ChatGPT would do Iron Man doing SEO. Let me try it right now. I'm going to try it right now. ChatGPT, by the way, would not do Goku from Dragon Ball Z doing search engine optimization, but maybe Tony Stark. So I put in my prompt. It is, nope, I wasn't able to generate the image you requested due to content policy restrictions. So ChatGPT cannot do that either. Grok 2.0 right now is the only one that can. This is also so good that when this functionality is patched, I just need to learn how to do this locally because this is so good. And to be able to create such recognizable characters to use as hooks, doing things in your niche, it is very crazy because people actually pay attention to this. They, they, it, it gets people to stop scrolling when they see someone recognizable or, or when they see an icon that's famous. You can also take logos and do things with logos. For example, when I made one of the biggest videos or podcasts about the recent Google leak that happened in May. What I did is I just went to Midjourney. I searched for Google and I found an image of the Google logo on fire with the earth shattering under it. And I took that image and then I put that over myself. And then I also took myself. I used remove.bg to isolate myself from the background, to remove the background from me and I took myself and then I put that over it. So there was this image of me, but it was like two times and it looked like I was shaking as the ground was shaking. And behind me, the Google logo was on fire, was bursting into flames. And this image, this thumbnail that I had created did really well. I think that's one of the, it was a hot topic and the thumbnail also did really well. And I created lots of thumbnails like that. And all these thumbnails did super well. And just something that I noticed another one, I made a podcast on this show, on the Edward show of Parasite search engine optimization with LinkedIn Pulse. And I had ChatGPT make the LinkedIn logo on fire. ChatGPT can still do logos, but it can't do all logos. And it will give pushback a decent amount of the time with logo generation, but it will still do logos. I wouldn't be surprised though if logo functionality is restricted in the future. But I had the LinkedIn logo on fire for Parasite SEO with LinkedIn Pulse. And people loved that thumbnail. People said that they loved that thumbnail. And I think that's one of the reasons why that episode did so much better than a lot of my other episodes. Thumbnails on YouTube videos are so, so, so important. There's a well-known thing and being able to create recognizable icons or logos in your niche to use for thumbnails. Come on, just so much opportunity here. 
and this is going to be restricted soon. And so I would say anybody try this. It is crazy. It is $8 with normal premium. And I think if you do premium plus, because I've already maxed out my image capacity and then I've had to wait a cool down period. I think if you do premium plus, you can make more images. So I'm probably going to upgrade to premium plus just to make a ton of images before this functionality is patched. There's no way it's not going to be patched. It's going to be patched. People are making threads on X about how Twitter is going to get super sued by all these organizations. For example, tons of people are generating Nintendo characters doing really raunchy things, really racy things. Search Nintendo Grok 2.0 on X and you can see some crazy images. So there's no way this isn't going to be passed. But right now it is a blue ocean and I would be remiss if I didn't share it with you. And so that's what I have for you on this episode of the show. This is episode 407 of my daily digital marketing podcast. Do this thing every day. It is 9.06 a.m. on a Thursday morning. I am feeling great. I have homemade iced tea next to me. There is ice in it and it's cold, but it's hot outside and it's cold in here and I'm feeling so good. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye now.